Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another morning edition of The Porch. I want to thank all of you for coming on and being a part of this broadcast, whether you're coming on Facebook Live or you're in Clubhouse. Thank you again for joining uh, another conversation on The Porch. We're going to do another lesson from Ecclesiastes today. We're going to be talking about seasons and the importance of understanding the season that you're in. And uh, if you would share the broadcast, I would appreciate it. Those on Facebook Live, please hit the share button. And of course, if you're in Clubhouse, go down to the bottom left-hand corner of the app and please share the broadcast. Let's get as many people involved in this conversation as possible. I do want to uh, thank God and welcome all the members of Crusaders Church, all the members of Impact University, and all of those who join me daily for this teaching that we call The Porch. The Porch is taken from Solomon's Porch in the book of Acts when the early believers gathered together in Solomon's Porch in one accord. And as a result, they saw great miracles, breakthroughs, teaching, preaching. There is power release when we gather together in unity on one accord, whether it's in person or whether it's on one of these social media apps. So thank you for gathering with me today. I do want to remind all the members of Crusaders Church that we'll, we'll have service Saturday at 2 p.m., 3821 South Michigan, our Saturday edition. This Saturday, Sandy Norman will be ministering, and I look forward to, for your being a part of that service. It's open to visitors as well as the members of Crusaders Church, 3821 South Michigan, at 2 p.m. It's on the south side of Chicago. Welcome and come and be a part of it. Kathy Summers and the ASAP band will be leading praise and worship. So let's come together, have a great, great service. Enjoy the word of the Lord and, um, and be a part of that particular gathering. Also, I wanna thank all of those that are partnering with me financially, especially in our missions projects. We're doing water projects. We've done two of them in South Africa. We're doing one now in Belize. Central America. And I want to thank God for all of those that have partnered with me in those projects, bringing clean water to people who, who ordinarily would not have access to it. And um, your giving really is changing lives. And if you want to be a part of what we're doing, feel free to sow a seed today. As I said, a double, double seed. We're calling this year the year of the double, a year of restoration. I've been encouraging people to get a copy of this book, you Shall Recover All, which is a book about restoration and recovery, especially after the pandemic. Uh, the subtitle is How God Turns Your Loss Into Gain. If you've not yet ordered this book, you can order it at Amazon.com or ChristianBook.com. And one of the principles of restoration is God gives you double for your shame, Isaiah 51. Double means multiplication, increase. And if you want to order that book, feel free to do so. Read it. It will encourage you. And I know that you'll be blessed by the message of this book, You Shall Recover All. Uh, if you want to sow a seed today, um, you can do a seed with the double numbers, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 88. Even some have been sowing seeds of 122. Then go to those giving addresses, uh, which is Cash App at JE Global, which stands for John Eckhart Global. That's also Venmo or PayPal at paypal.me slash Apostle J-E, the number one. And you can also give through Giving to the Stars right here on Facebook Live, which is next to the heart and like button. Or you can go into Clubhouse, into my profile and go all the way down and give directly into Clubhouse. You can also give by Zelle at E-C-K-H-J-O-H-N at gmail.com. Again, that's E-C-K-H. J-O-H-N at gmail.com. And for those who are sowing today and those who have been sowing, again, I decree favor, multiplication, blessing, increase, prosperity, abundance, multiplication on your life and your finances. I decree Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord will make rich and God would add no sorrow. Second Corinthians 9 and 8 that God would make all grace or favor abound toward you, that you have always having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. 
I decree 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. I decree Psalm 66, that you're coming into your wealthy place. Psalms 18, that you're coming into a large place. Psalms 112, let wealth and riches be in your house. Deuteronomy 111, may God multiply you a thousand times more. Job 28 and 1, may you find the vein of silver, the prosperity vein. I decree over your life, Haggai 2, the gold and silver belongs to God. Let it come into your hands. I decree Ephesians 3.20, that God would do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Also, Habakkuk 1.5, that God would work a work in your finances that'll be so great you'll not believe it, though a man declare it unto you. And Haggai 1.6, there'll be no holes in your bag, your purse, your wallet, or your accounts. Also, Micah 2.13, let the breaker go before you. Jesus is your breaker. Let you experience sudden breakthroughs in your finances, your career, your ministries, and let you break forth on the right hand and on the left, according to Isaiah 54 and 3, and then Isaiah 48 and, 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 and 10, 48, I got it, I got it, 48 and 17. <laughs> May God teach you the prophet and lead you by the way that you should go. I decree according to Job 22, 28, we shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto us. Father, I thank you for those that are sowing and giving today. Multiply their seed sown according to 2 Corinthians. Give them a reward according to Matthew chapter 10. I, I speak it, I decree it over their finances and I bless them. Those that are partnering with me in this ministry, I bless them in Jesus name, amen. 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 Well, today we're going to continue our lessons from Ecclesiastes. And we've already covered some things from it. We are probably, of course, the book is, is inexhaustible. But a familiar verse or verses are found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time and season for everything under heaven. It talks about a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time for war, a time for peace, a time for uh, laughter and joy, a time for mourning, uh, a time to hug, a time to re uh, refrain from hugging. So there is a time and season for everything under heaven. And remember that the book of Ecclesiastes is one of the wisdom books uh, that are found in scripture. I love wisdom. Wisdom is my passion. Um, one of my friends who is a Native American, she's, as a matter of fact, she's on the platform. Uh, she, uh, Naomi, she gave me a Native American name called Winds of Wisdom. She's an elder in her tribe, so she has the authority to do that. So my Native American name is Winds of Wisdom. I love that name. Thank you. Naomi, for Hallelujah. yes, give, give me that name. <laughs> Winds of wisdom. I love wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, 7, therefore get wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. It's the, it's the most important thing. It's the thing that you should prioritize in your life. It's the principal thing, the foundational thing. And so I love Proverbs. I love Ecclesiastes and the book of Job. All of those are what we call wisdom uh, books in scripture. There's a lot of wisdom in Ecclesiastes. We talked about the wisdom of not chasing the wind. He talked about vanity of vanity, all is vanity. And when you chase the wind, when you don't operate in a higher purpose and calling for your life, and you go after just money, fame, popularity, success, the, the, the preacher Solomon did all of that. And he's saving us some wasted effort. He's saying, I did it all. And the result was, it's all vain. It's all futile. It's all empty. So don't waste your time just pursuing things, positions, fame, wealth, money, success. But the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's the conclusion of the matter. And so I want to talk about seasons today because I believe and I know as a matter of fact that one of the most one of the most, how can I say this? One of the most uh, dangerous things you can do that is 
that is that will sabotage your success in life is you can miss your season or you can not know the season and knowing the season what season God has you in is a very important uh, uh, part of being successful. You know, I believe that when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, I shared this, that there are a lot of questions that are asked in this book. Uh, and, and often when you're living, all of us have questions. We ask God, why are we here? What is my purpose? Why did this happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do the wicked prosper? We all have these questions. And really the book of Ecclesiastes has already asked the question. So we don't have to waste our time trying to figure these things out. And sometimes one of the questions that people ask is why did this happen in my life at this time? Why, what is going on, Lord, in my life at this time? And many people get confused. They don't understand because they don't understand the season. Some people don't understand why seasons, why things change in their life. Well, it, it's a new season. When, the, when there's a new season, things change. Now, I'm, I'm from Chicago, and in Chicago, we were supposed to have four seasons, even though sometimes you can have two seasons in one day. But we have, of course, every, every, every nation does, but it's really highlighted in Chicago. We have spring, which we're entering into now. We have uh, summer. It gets very hot and humid in Chicago, right on Lake Michigan. Then you have fall when the leaves begin to fall and cool weather begins to come. Then you have winter, which can be very cold, snowy, icy, four seasons. And every time there's a change in the season, you need to change the way you dress. You change the way you, really the way you live because the, the weather changes, the season changes, and you have to make that transition. You cannot live in the winter like you do in the summer. You cannot live in the summer like you do in the winter. It's a different season. And we have to understand that all of us in life go through seasons and seasons change. And one of the keys to success in life is to know when the season is changing for you that the season does not remain the same all the time. And if you don't change or ship with the season, you can be stuck in an old season. I've said this often, that, that one, of the most, one of the most, how can I say this? I, I don't wanna say dangerous. Uh, one of the worst things that can happen to a person is for them to be stuck in a previous season. And there are many people that are stuck spiritually in an old season. They never move. Many churches, many pastors, many leaders, they never shift. They think everything remains the same and, and they get stuck. They get outdated. Uh, they, get, they become outmoded. Uh, they become irrelevant because they don't change with the season. And when you miss your season, uh, it takes discernment to know the season. Remember when Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you can look at the sky when it's red and tell that the storm is coming, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. You don't understand the season you're living in. And they missed their salvation. They missed the time of their visitation because they did not know the season. And so it's important to know what season you're in and that seasons do change. It's important to adjust and make adjustments in the changing seasons of your life. The season that you're in when you're in your 20s is gonna be different from the season you're in when you're 40s and 50s. And as you get older, seasons change, relationships change. Some people from your past are not gonna go into your new season. I know you wanna carry them with you, but many times they cannot go. Not that they weren't wrong for you for that season, but they just can't go with you into your new season. God does do new things in a new season. Many of you have heard me preach so much from Isaiah 42 and 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God does do new things. God does bring you into a new season. And you have to know the season for your business, your ministry, 
your family, your life. I mean, even with your children, with your family, seasons change, things change. And sometimes people, because they miss this important principle, and notice there is a time and season for every purpose under heaven. God has a purpose in your life. The seasons provide a purpose for the earth. There's a purpose for, for, for summer. There's a purpose for spring. There's a purpose for summer. There's a purpose for fall. There's a purpose for winter. There's a purpose when the rain comes in the spring to, to make the ground moist for planting seed. There's a purpose for when the, when the season ends, when you harvest and bring forth the abundance of the earth. And of course, even Israel, because they were agricultural people, understood the different seasons. Their, their calendar was based on the seasons. There was the season of, of Pentecost, which was first fruits. There was a season of Passover. There was a season of tabernacles, which was the harvest season. There was an agricultural season. There was a, a time for the plant, a time to reap. And so there are seasons. There are seasons of war and peace. There are times when you have to fight spiritually, spiritual warfare. There are times we don't have many battles. Sometimes people wonder, why am I having all these battles? Well, it might be a time to war. And then, then you're saying, why are there any battles in my life? Why are things so peaceful? It's a time uh, for peace. So understand the seasons. It'll, it'll help you answer some of the questions of life. Life does not have to be complicated if we understand these principles of wisdom. We can live our lives skillfully. We can have understanding of the times and seasons, and we can know and discern when the season is changing in our lives. Nations go through seasons. The world goes through difficult seasons. I mean, the pandemic was a certain season. We never had a season like that. When the pandemic is over, it'll be a new season. There can be seasons financially, seasons spiritually in your life, but seasons are very important and Seasons change. I want to keep emphasizing that. They change. The season does not remain the same. If you're not willing to change and make adjustments and shift, you're going to be stuck in an old season and wonder why things are not working. What works in one season doesn't work in another season. You can't plant in winter. Planting doesn't work in winter. You don't, you don't reap in spring. Reaping and harvesting doesn't occur in spring. It's a certain season to do that. And if you sleep during the planting season, you will not harvest during the harvest season. If you're lazy and slowful during that season when you should be working and planting and sowing, then when the harvest season comes, you're not going to be able to harvest. The Proverbs talks about a slowful man, a sluggard will not plow and will not plant. Uh, when in, in, the, in the season to sow, but, and then they will not harvest. They'll beg and harvest. So we need to know when it's time to plant, when it's time to reap. Some of you are wondering, when is my reaping season coming? Well, you may be in a sowing season right now. You may be in a planting season right now, but sow in that season. And when the harvest season comes, you will harvest. Know the season. Don't become frustrated because certain things don't work in certain seasons. They're not designed to work in that season. When you understand the season and what to do, God gave the children of Issachar understanding of the times, what Israel ought to do. When you understand the season you're in, you know what you should be doing and you know what you should not be doing. There's certain things you should not be doing in certain seasons. There's certain things you should be doing in certain seasons. So this wisdom gives you the ability to know not what to do in a certain season. Don't avoid it. Don't do it. It's a waste of time and what to do in a certain season. When to change, when to stop doing certain things, when to add on certain things. Knowing the season can save you a lot of problems in your life. So these scriptures are not in the Bible just so we can have a nice verse to read. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter three, beautiful, beautiful poetry, beautiful verses, some of the most well-known verses in scripture, but they have significance for our lives. I want to pray for you that you'll have discernment and understanding and wisdom concerning the seasons of your life, that God would cause this season 
to be the season that you understand that you're walking, that you'll not be frustrated with the season that God has you in, but that you'll walk in it. You will be blessed. You'll know what to do. You'll know what not to do. And you'll be faithful in doing what God has called you to do. And you'll understand the purpose of that season. There is a season and, and there's a purpose, a time and season for every purpose under heaven that you'll know the purpose of it. There is a purpose. There's a reason why you're in that season. When you understand it, you embrace the season. You walk in the season. There's a purpose when God changes the season. Understand the purposes of God. I pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of, uh, of, of, of knowledge to be upon you and that you'll understand the seasons that God has ordained for you to walk in. You were born for such a time as this. You were born in this generation. This is your season to live. And there's a time to be born and a time to die. Don't waste your life and the season that God has you in not doing what God called you to do, chasing the wind and end up living in futility, vanity, and, and uselessness. Don't do it. Have purpose for your life. <clears throat> Walk in God's purpose. Uh, get around the prophetic. Hear the voice of God. Have a dream and vision for your life. Understand the season that you're in. Now, I've been ministering 43 years, and God has brought me through different seasons of my ministry. I'm enjoying the season I'm in now. It's not the same season I was in 20, 30 years ago. It's a new season and I'm embracing it. I'm walking. I'm not trying to do what I did 20 and 30 years ago. It's a different season for me now, and the season to come will be different, and it's, it's enjoyable when you walk in the new season that God has for you. Father, I thank you for this word. I bless your people, and I speak grace, favor, peace, and shalom over everyone that is participating in these broadcasts. And don't forget to share the broadcast, those on Facebook Live, and of course, also, don't forget to sow and remember the giving addresses. Thank all of those that are giving stars on the Facebook page. I appreciate it. And those that are sowing, you can still do that even after the program is over. If you're watching the replay, please sow a seed into our missions projects. We're seeing some great, great things happen around the world, helping the poor, helping those in need. It is phenomenal seeing the joy that we're able to bring to the lives of people that are hurting and just being rich in good works, as the scripture says. I bless you. I thank God for you. I speak grace, favor, peace, multiplication, and increase over your life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Until tomorrow morning, um, God bless you. Uh, hopefully, I'll be on tomorrow morning. Let me, let me think here. I have to travel in the morning, but I might still be able to do this. I'll, I'll figure it out. If I don't schedule it, I'll come back Monday. Of course, Sunday, um, I'll be in Clubhouse for our Master of the Prophetic. But until you see me again, God bless you and double shalom.